For somebody who has oily skin, this is definitely a stepping out of a comfort zone type of thing. It took me a little while to get used to seeing myself with a little bit of sheen like right after doing my makeup and not like a couple hours in. And I do still get a little bit of shine right up in here. Natural oils kind of coming through about hour four, hour five. Uh, but nothing too crazy that I can't just blot away. Uh, but for the most part, this is the look I've been going for. Very bronzy a little bit of brow a little bit of eye just a little definition around there but nothing too crazy big old fluffy lashes but without any falsies on there because i don't have time or patience to do that on the daily uh but yeah this has kind of been some of my newer products that i've been playing with i have this whole bin here that i separated them all out to kind of have them readily available to grab I've had several of them for a couple of weeks now. I have a good grasp of what's been working for me, how to use them and how to apply them, how to layer them and things like that. And that's what I'm gonna share with you here today. Uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the application and I hope you enjoy it. All right, let's get started with getting the hair up. I have a couple of new hair things that I've been kind of playing with. I, of course, have my Invisibobble, and this is their scrunchy version. I love Invisibobble, as you know, but then I heard Casey Holmes talking about this new hair tie that she was trying out, and she's like, it doesn't move, it doesn't crimp, it doesn't hurt, all this other stuff, um, and it's called the Gimme Beauty, so I decided to order some. I know this is kind of random, but it looks like the top of a sock that somebody like cut off. Of course, it's like a higher quality than that, but it just gave me that vibe. Um, they have them in different thicknesses. I had ordered the little trial pack with the different sizes as well as one with like cool, fun colors. So I have that. I also have their scrunchie because I wanted to compare it to the Invisibobble one to see if it can hold up. And so far, I hate to say it because you know how much I love my Invisibobble, but I have been enjoying my Gimme Beauty scrunchie a little bit better. It holds my hair where I put it. Sometimes after a little while, the Invisibobble kind of like slowly starts to sag a little bit. And yeah, if that's a big deal for you, these are like five bucks on the Gimme Beauty website. So totally worth giving a try. I don't have like a discount code. They have no idea who I am. Um, I'll see if I can find a discount code for another influencer and put it down there so you can save some money too. So what kind of sparked this was recently I placed an order to use my points for Ulta since I wasn't one of their platinum members anymore for this year, my points were gonna expire. So I placed this large order and then I kind of got on the Sephora website and finally placed an order after a good while. This is from Target. So we're definitely having a good mishmash of things. But one of the things that I added because I was using points and I was like, well, it's not like cash. I ordered these kitsch towel scrunchies and they have them in different prints. The one I got was like a leopardy animal print and it is so cute. It's like a terry. It kind of feels like those hair turbans that we use to dry our hair after getting out of the shower. So I don't know. I really don't understand the purpose of it. I think it's for when your hair is wet. It can kind of like absorb a little bit more water. Um, like if you need to throw it up in a bun and you don't have a turban on it. But I mean, I just use it as like a cute little hold my bun in place type. Not that I needed it with the Gimme Beauty, but it makes it cute, okay? These things drive me nuts. To clip up those little flyaways. Do you like my earrings? I made them. Sophia and I have been really crafty the last few days, so we've been kind of playing around with all my little craft supplies. Okay, where to start? This is a product that I got during the Black Friday sale. So not all of this is super crazy new. It was like a little trio set from Macy's. It's the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Set. And I'm gonna be using the Primerizer, Primer Plus Moisturizer today. And tap it into the skin. I'm not a huge fan of the original formula, this one here. I usually use it on clients because I feel like it works best on like everybody else's skin but mine. And I did prep my skin with like my moisturizer, SPF, everything like that this morning. So lately, because my skin has been pretty decent, I've been just getting like tiny little breakouts here or there, but with my new skincare regimen, which if you're interested in hearing that, let me know, I could do a whole video on it. I have been using a lighter application of makeup because I'm like, oh, I want my skin to kind of like shine through. I want to enjoy this. Like if you know my acne struggle, you know that like this is nothing and this is a big deal for me, okay? So... Thank you. 
on that note i have a couple of different products that i've been trying to like scale back and use more like creamy more dewy more luminous more uh like samantha ravindall like she likes to just kind of put i mean she's gorgeous naturally you know i need a little bit of help kind of covering things up and uh, I've been taking some tips and tricks from her. So one of them is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. I got mine in the light medium. And it is like this balmy, pink undertone, salmon-y type of waxy concealer. So I like to take a little bit onto the ring finger. I just kind of like work it in. And then I will start to pat this under the eyes. And it is just creamy and dreamy and it starts to color correct these dark circles that i just naturally have uh see how it just instantly like if i was gonna run some errands and i just wanted a little something something this is something i could tap on by far it is not giving me a full coverage to backtrack to the primer for a moment, I feel like I'm breezing through this almost too fast trying to hit everything. I like this one because it feels like it's giving me a little bit of a tacky finish so that the makeup can grip, but it also has that hydrating factor and it's not super heavy. It's very light, it's comfortable, it kept my light glow sheen. So it's keeping my skin hydrated and I really, really like that. Now to layer on top of that, lately I've been really loving this and I'm so so surprised okay it is a color pop the pretty fresh hyaluronic acid tinted moisturizer uh again i still use all of my normal skincare underneath this i don't find that a primer or tinted moisturizer is going to do it for me it's just not like i i stick with my my regular skincare and these are like bonus products to me you know i just feel like your skincare and your makeup need to stay like separate maybe that'll change as i age right now that's where i'm at now to apply this i sometimes will like just tap it on with my fingers since it's a very lightweight tinted moisturizer or i will use a brush this is also something that was influenced by samantha this is the elf airbrush stippling brush and mine is in the shade light 8n and they did have these in the store in ulta so you could kind of like see which color and which undertone work best for you because definitely looking online i would have picked a different one and i'm glad i went in the store and kind of like swatched them out i even tried some on the side of my neck just to make sure as you can see i'm just kind of doing like very light little swirly circles it barely covers anything see it just barely gives a light little mini veil but keeps that hydration boost there so then to layer on top is something else that's really nice and light very very light medium coverage this is the screen queen this is a new for milani or at least new that i noticed this is the natural finish foundation mine is in the 180 warm shell and i saw this in my ulta store and i was like and it, but it was on the end cap in the back of the store okay so onto the back of my hand and then i'm just going to start dotting this out key to my look lately has just been hydration 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 i want to like drench my skin with hydration can there possibly be too much hydration probably but at this point do i really care no i am trying to keep it as balanced and happy as possible I feel like neither of these stick very well to the nose so i do go back in with a concealer which i'll show you here in a moment just to kind of give myself the extra little something because there's days that i want to go to work and have my natural skin kind of shine through like this um but i do want to cover like the discoloration around the nose or maybe like a couple of the little breakouts doing very light little barely touching the skin little circles to kind of buff it into the skin making this look as lightly applied as possible okay so for under the eyes and for tapping on some of the little breakouts i'm surprised but i've been really liking the bye bye under eyes from it cosmetics this is in the shade neutral medium and it's something that i had like an ipsy bag and i was going through some stuff and i was like mm, i guess i'll try it again i didn't like it when i first tried it but that was also when i was in like the mojo of like full 100 percent coverage 100 percent matte i want to look like a doll on uh, now i'm kind of like i just want to look human and like myself and a little more glowy so 
tiniest little bit ever and then I tap it on the ring fingers and then I tap it under the eyes and it just covers everything it sits nicely on top of that Becca uh, corrector because again that's not like a concealer it's more of a, a color corrector I do feel like I still need a little bit of coverage around the nose so I'm gonna pull out the pretty fresh hyaluronic creamy concealer from ColourPop I figured why not try them together this is very very creamy very light and the shade itself is a bit lighter because I did purchase this online um, I did swatch them in the store but then I changed my mind when I was looking online and that's why I say stick with your original in-store picks uh, this is in the shade fair 20 n and as you can see, it is just pretty light, but it's good for under the eyes and like around the nose and just areas that I want to like bring forward and really brighten, liven up a little bit. And I'm going to use this brush from Sigma. It is the F64 Soft Blend Concealer Brush. And this is so perfectly dense and it, it's bendy, but not too bendy because I have other, I have other brushes like this one from Japanesque and this one from Moda where they look very similar but yet i like using this one for concealer this one for packing uh, powder under the eye and this one for buffing in some powder that i'll show you here in a little bit sounds a little bougie i have brushes for every area of the face but i'm gonna just pick up just a tiny little baby bit of this concealer and start to tap it around the areas that i want just a little more coverage a little more brightness the concealer is by far not a full coverage concealer. It is very light. It is very moisturizing and feeling. It's not going to make you look like dry or like flaky or anything like that. It's very forgiving. It is definitely not a shape tape though. So there's days where I'm like, okay, I need more under the eye than what this or like the bye bye under eye can provide me. But every time I use the shape tape now, I'm like, it looks so heavy, it looks so dry. Cause I'm so used to seeing things a little more emollient, a little more moisturized. Is that a little bit better lighting wise? I changed things up a bit. Apologies if it makes it worse. I'm using the P88 Precision Flat Angle Sigma brush to press some of the areas that I'm having a little bit of the separation because my skin's a little bit dry in certain areas. Um, I've been doing some glycolic treatments trying to get uh, these spots that I have to lighten up. So uh, another reason why I'm like killing the skin with kindness and moisturization is because I'm trying to balance out the different procedures that I'm doing to myself to try to get rebalanced and glowy. So let's go ahead and set the face before we can get any lines or creasing because we're using very creamy products and hydrating products today. I tend to get some expression line uh, creases right up here on the forehead. So let's set it with the Hourglass Dim Light Ambient Lighting Powder. I just decided to get the deluxe sample size because I was too chicken to buy the full size. These are pricey and I didn't know if it was going to work for me. So far I've been really liking it. So I'm going to grab a big Farrah powder brush. I'm going to swirl it in here, pick up a good amount and kind of like then go back in and like tap it into the bristles a little bit better. And then I like to tap it onto the skin. You may not even see a difference. It is so faint, the difference that this makes. And yet, every time I set my makeup with this, someone goes, what did you do to your skin? Something's different, something, something good. It's just that little, tiny little bit extra that gives you that little zhuzh. I am skipping the under eye. It just... Oh my gosh, I don't know how to explain it, but just looking at your skin, it just looks so healthy without being too shiny or too over glossed and there's no sparkle in it whatsoever. I'm obsessed. Like I get why everyone loves these. I could see myself burning through this pretty quickly and I would likely buy the full size at that point. So let's start warming up the face and then we'll kind of go back to the under eyes. Picked up these Cover FX little duo sets because they just looked gorgeous. I swatched them in the store and I was like, I need them in my life. This blush one 
is everything. I love soft pinky peach like blushes and this looked perfectly taupey enough that it could kind of contour me but also bronzy enough that it could warm up my face. So let's go ahead and start to apply the bronzer here. This is in the shade Sunkissed Bronze. They have a couple of different tones within the line and at first I wasn't sure that I really liked this because it is pigmented and I picked up too much uh, day one that I gave this a try and I like using this brush from Luxie. It's the 1010 small contour. It's like a flat top and I like to first start like a little stipple motion type of deal. It looks super crazy, right? Okay, stay with me here. Little stipple motion. I don't even have to look. I know where my cheekbone is because I'm going so slow. I can kind of feel where the bone is and I'm paying attention to that as I go up and I'm definitely lifting up because I want my face to look as slender as possible and up towards the ear. The brush is really great to use on the nose too because you can kind of get that perfectly straight line. We want to look like we just got back from vacation. Let's bring a little bit down to the jaw. And we're nice and glowy and bronzy. We're not glowy yet. Let's add in a little more glow. I'm gonna pick up this, I don't even know what brush this is, but it's kind of like this domed, almost like a powder brush, but like not. And I like picking up the shimmer sheet. Now, originally I thought this was gonna be good as a highlighter, but it's just too, too deep to be used right on the top of the cheek. But right there, it has a little bit of a tone to it. So, uh, and I like a little more brighter, a little more champagne toned at the top of my cheek. The top of the cheek, but not where my highlight would be. Just right here. Almost as like, you know how there's blush toppers? I kind of treat it like a bronzer topper, which is exactly how I was using my butter bronzer. So I don't feel like you need to spend this type of price tag to get this very soft glowy bronzy look i think you could absolutely pick up something like the butter bronzer my favorite one is this one in deep i feel like i get a very similar look where it just kind of like slightly catches the light catches your eyes you're walking by okay let's put on a little bit of the blush this is in the soft peach shade and I'm going to just pick up ever so slightly, tiny little baby bit on this Japanese, I don't know brush, but it's just very, very, very soft. And I just very lightly hit the top of the cheek and just kind of marry those two areas together. There is a blush topper in here, but since I used the bronzer one, I'm not, that's like too much, too much going on. So we're gonna skip that today. Now for highlighter, I've been kind of doing two different things, depending on how much I want it to like pop. I've really been loving this Natasha Denona Blush and Glow little duo. This is All Over Glow 01 Light, and then the blush is in Golden Coral. Now this is almost too coral for me, so I don't really find myself pulling for the blush but I love this face powder. I need to look and see if she sells this separately because I would absolutely get a full size of this. It gives me the vibes of the Hourglass one where there's no sparkle, but it's a little more concentrated. It definitely has a bit more of a tone to it um, when it comes to, to like a color payoff. And it gives you that just like lit from within glow. Definitely hitting up the tip of the nose around the nose because I feel like this area tends to look a little bit dry and I want to look like creamy and hydrated. Is creamy the right word or did that just sound creepy? <laughs> and then if I'm feeling extra popping, I will pull out the Anastasia Emreezy. This is like by far, I have put so, I, I refuse to use this side of it. Uh, now that they've re-released it, I will probably start actually using it, but I was so terrified of burning through this and it was limited edition. And it's one of my favorite things of life. So I really, I just, I get in there. I've been using only this little corner. <laughs> it looks so gross, it's only that corner. Little extra 
something something there so fabulous and glowy today maybe touch up a little bit of the blush kind of soften the highlight into the bronzer into the blush just kind of marry all of it so there's no line of demarcation i'm gonna see if this is gonna work so today i feel like i want a little bit more under this eye right in here so i'm gonna use a little bit of the age rewind i think this is just the brightening one i'm just gonna pick up a little bit of it on the precision flat angled brush and i'm actually gonna tap off a i'm gonna kind of make sure that i don't have too much on the brush because then that will just ruin everything. I just want a tiny little bit of extra something something right in here. And right up in here. I feel like there's some darkness, some shadows that are happening right on that outer corner. And right on this inner corner. I crease real hard right here. So I'm trying to tread very lightly in the area. So I'm not like piling up too much. I mean, I've put a couple layers on already, but I'm not putting a ton of those products on. If I feel like I need to set it, there's two different powders. I guess three different powders I've been kind of loving. I have been trying out the translucent setting powder veil from Hourglass. I like that for under the eyes, depending on the concealer I'm using. Like today, it would work really well because it's a very light area. Let's put a little bit of that on so I can show you what it looks like. It's very, very finely milled, practically just like a little fairy dust. There's no sheen or shimmer or anything, at least that I can see when I apply this. And I'm gonna just lightly tap. See, I like that Moda brush. This is the one I just automatically went and picked up. And this is called the, the Glow Brush, I think. I think it's probably supposed to be a highlighter brush, but I like using it for this because it's perfectly like dense. See, no baking needed. And just a little bit of something, something there to make sure we're not creasing and moving all over the place. Oh, so while I'm doing the other side, the other powders I've been really liking is the Natasha Denona Invisible HD Face Powder in light medium. Love this for setting the face. Like if I wanted to, maybe I'll set it under here after we do the setting spray. Sometimes I need a little more coverage. And then for under eye, if I'm doing like full beat, need my concealer to stay like nice and matte and not move, the um, Tarte Shape Tape Setting Powder for under the eye and it comes with its own little sponge and it's got like a little bouncy area right here. This is everything. Your concealer does not move. Um, don't apply too much of it. It can definitely look a little bit heavy and a little dry if you over apply okay so now that we are done with the face other than brows and eyes i am going to set my face this is something new i've been doing and trying out and it's been working pretty well um, especially if i need to rush through like the eye area and just like get something done at least i know i'm like done with the face and ready to run out the door uh, so I've been really liking a couple different things. You know that I love my Scandinavia makeup setting spray. This is really great for when I have like full face, full like actual full coverage type of, I mean it would work well today, but like when I really need my makeup to stay and not move, <laughs> this is what I will pull out. Like it is practically empty, but something I've been just trying to like work through since it came in the set was the primer water from Smashbox. I like it as like almost a setting refreshing spray. Like if I get home from work and I wanna film a video and I need to like look fresher, uh, this is incredible. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a good old shake. Oh, it just feels so good. I put a lot on, woo. Okay, and I'm gonna feel around my table here. I have my little fan that I got off of Amazon. Best investment ever it feels so bougie it kind of like brings your makeup routine to the next level i feel like a real influencer in this moment but i feel like even if i didn't do videos this just makes you feel special because <laughs> you're like mm, i don't sit here and fan myself i use a fan it feels so cool especially on a hot day oh this feels so good I do keep my eyes closed because my eyes will water if they're open. <laughs> and then I've definitely ruined some looks by trying to rush and like do other things while I have the fan on me. And 
it makes my eyes cry. You can kind of feel the areas that are still a little bit damp. And there's a second setting too. You can hear it get a little louder. It goes a little bit faster. And this one uh, is a USB somewhere around here. There's like a little USB charger. So there's no batteries to change. You just plug it in and charge it. And I have yet to charge it. I think I charged it the first time when I first got it to like use it. And I have yet to plug it in. And I've had it like a month. And I use it every day. So, oh, it feels so good to even just close your eyes. Ah, that's how you know you're like stressed out. I am loving the skin. Now, if this is too much shine, the Natasha Denona Invisible HD Face Powder is incredible. It's not mattifying, but it's not dewy. Let me just show you. I'll kind of put just a little baby bit into the cap, and then I grab this big, dense brush. This is a really, really dense brush. This is something that I got in the Ipsy box. It's the Complex Culture Press Set. It's a bronzer brush, but I like using it for this. So I really work it into the bristles, the tip of the bristles, kind of maybe even swirl, swirl tap buff. All right, and then I will just lightly, you see how it takes away a little bit of the shine? I don't touch the tops of my cheeks. I want that to stay dewy and I don't really touch the tip of my nose or the crease and I don't go under my eyes I guess I'm a little bit picky with where I put this powder oh the brows are looking wonky let's do our brows <laughs> um but see what I mean how it just takes away a little bit of that like there was almost too much going on I really love this and I'm probably gonna have this for like ever because I use just the tiniest little baby amount it's so finely milled i like that a little bit better than the hourglass when setting the face because i feel like it's just a little softer um this definitely is good for like under the eyes around the nose the areas that i crease do our brows you know i love my l'oreal brow definer but i'm out of it and i needed to work through what i had and i've sent this box of like benefit products a while back and this is the precisely my brow pencil in the shade 4.5 and it's pretty much the same thing as the brow definer. Just maybe in a slightly different tone. So when I'm doing like a more natural day, I I, I call this my more natural. Like meaning more skin-like, a little more dewy, not full matte. That is my version of it. I will do this little inner corner. I just put a little bit of product right there. It looks crazy for a moment, bear with me. And then I draw a line to sharpen up the bottom here a little bit, okay? And then I go up to this top area and I'm doing very light touching strokes down to the arch in the tail of the brow. Looks wild right now, right? Bear with, actually let's leave this one. We'll do like a before and after. And then I take this spoolie and I kind of like raise my brows up so it's nice and taut because like I'm starting to lose a little elasticity in the skin. And I will just very softly do little quick strokes to disperse the product up and out. And I'm using the tip of the spoolie to kind of hit the tail and the arch here. And this is almost a little too square for me so I'll take my pinky and just soften it up a little bit. And then we have brow, no brow. So we have brow, no brow. I don't even like to set it, especially if I'm gonna be like at work all day and under steam. I need a little bit more and I will brush the brow hairs up a little bit more and give it more of that like brow laminated look. That's like totally the in thing right now is big fluffy brows. And since mine are like quite fluffy, I I can I feel like I can get away with that trend. Like this trend was made for me to be a little unruly. I need to get my brows tweezed. 
and brow. I feel like it changes your face so much. So let me do the other side. Our sisters are on, because they are sisters, not twins. And uh, I feel more complete. I feel like bronzer and brows are the two things I spend the most like detailed amount of time working with because they're my favorite things about putting a face together. I don't know, there's just something about like glowing up the face with an amazing bronzer and different contours and you know, different days call for different shades and like techniques but uh, brows and bronzer like that's that's where my life is uh, aside from skincare of course <laughs> okay let's do a little something something with our eyeballs i have these elf little mini palettes here in front of me i went to kohl's i went to target i went all around to try to find each of these the more neutral shades i know there's like a blue one and a green one i still kind of want to get those even though i don't really wear those shades a ton well i mean i love green but I um, got these really neutral ones. My two favorites that I found myself like pulling for the most over the last few weeks that I have had these are the Pumpkin Spice Little Bite and the Cream and Sugar one. They are probably the most universal usable shades. The other ones are a little bit deeper and um, we have ones that are a little more pink. Not everyone can pull this kind of stuff off. And there's even certain days that I'm like, ooh, it's making me look sick. Uh, purples, I really like the purple one too. I almost wish that these little pan, the little squares popped out and I can maybe create my own palette i mean i could probably pop these out and figure that out little feedback for elf like how cool would it be if i could maybe make this into my own palette rather than having the two individuals not that they're huge but just a little my wheels start turning so i'm going to throw in a little eyeshadow this isn't going to be like an eye tutorial i just kind of want to start getting the makeup done at this point and this is what like if i was going to work what i would do i do something quick i don't do anything too crazy um, I'm a bit lazy lately when it's coming to my eyeshadow. I'm like, slap it on. Does it look half decent? Okay. Is it half blended? Like, look, doesn't look too crazy? Okay. So I'm using from the Pumpkin Pie palette, the matte brown. It is a lot deeper than I thought it would be. Meaning like, it's actually pigmented. Like it actually comes off on your eyeball. This is crazy cool. I'm glad I've had them for a few weeks to kind of play with them a little bit before showing you this. Seriously, that could be a look in itself. There are a little liner, little lashes on, you're good to go. But I'm gonna go a little bit more. Let's grab a fluffy brush and we've got this like creamy shade over here. Go a little bit under the brow and right into the top of that color so we're not having any harsh lines we're gonna be very soft with this maybe a little bit under the hair didn't pick up any product just like whatever's on there type of deal and then i really love this morphe m506 brush it's very dense yet the tips of the bristles are very fluffy and I'm going to pick up the deepest shade in the cream and sugar palette and go just on the outer corner here. And that's why I kind of use these together is because I kind of wish this matte transition shade was in this guy, this palette here. It's almost like you need them together. You could keep this a matte look with using the colors we already have, but I kind of want to do a little more bronziness. Um, these are very similar but I kind of like this one a little bit better when I've used it on the eye. It has more of a golden, whereas this one is a little more coppery. There we go, just in the center. Again, I'm like not being all precise with this. I am slapping it on. Good to go. Let's get something on this inner corner. I love this Alamar brush, this like flat tipped packer brush. And I'm going to pick up the shimmer. This one's definitely a little crumbly. But that's because it's going to show up. Look how crazy that is. Here, I'll put it under the eye right here. So you can see. Yeah, like this is elf eyeshadow here. Like these were like $3 each. Like this is 6 bucks in my hand right here. And mind you, I did also pull another new palette that I had just gotten. But I was like, you know what? I want to play with the elf ones. The Nude Light from Huda 
Huda Beauty. I mean, oh, these are all colors I I just relish and live within. But I figured let's let's keep it somewhat drugstore on some of the options here. And I have been using these. It's not like I'm uh, pulling out something for the first time here. A little bit on that inner corner to really brighten things up a bit. And then kind of marry those together a little bit. Maybe go back in with the outer corner. No additional product, just whatever was already on there. This one I'm definitely going to pull down. I'm just going to put a little bit of the Sigma Longwear Eyeliner Pencil on my waterline. I don't feel like doing a liquid liner today. I'm feeling a little lazy. So there's that. And I always do that waterline even when I'm doing like a very minimal makeup look because I feel like it just makes, even if I didn't have eyeshadow on, it just makes your lashes look so much more fluffy. Um, something else I've been doing to make my lashes a little more fluffy is using up this L'Oreal Voluminous Base Primer mascara thing. Um, this came in a duo when I ordered like a Lash Paradise and I did not like the Lash Paradise so I just kind of like threw this off to the side with it. But since I'm trying to use a product, I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it another go. And I realized I like this. I like it with other mascaras. So what I do is I really just treat it as a little, like a first mascara right here on the outer corner. I don't really do the bottom lashes or the even the inner corner, just the um, outer third. And then depending on how fluffy I want my brows to look that day, yes, I use like four products for my lashes. I love lashes, but I don't like putting on false lashes like for my everyday, unless I'm like going out um, or doing like a video or something like that. I love all three of these mascaras. Uh, the CoverGirl Ex Exhibitionist, we're gonna use that today. The Benefit Roller Lash is, I have to have this in my arsenal at all times. Like I can't believe I stopped using it. I kind of forgot how much I loved it. And the Urban Decay Perversion, this is so thick. It'll definitely give you your spidery lashes. This is going to separate, lift, and like curl. And the CoverGirl one kind of does a little bit of both without being extra. So I use like these three on days that I want to look like I'm wearing false lashes. And this is more of like my everyday. So let's get this on before the primer totally dries. Otherwise it can look a little bit chunky because it like grips to dry primer rather than slightly wet primer. I do a little bit of a mixture of like blinking and oh, I got it on my lid. Of course I did. Look at how crazy that looks. Like I'm barely touching these lashes because I don't want to get them too heavy looking because then it definitely can pull down your eye. Kind of dust away some of the mascara I got on my lid. That's crazy, right? A little bit of the primer over here and then just the mascara and primer over here. And if I have gotten it on my lid, I usually just give it a second to dry and then I'll go in with like a little like brush and like dust it away like this. And it's like not an issue. If you go in when it's wet, it'll just smear. So just give it a second to kind of dry and you can usually just kind of like get it off. I love the mascara and I definitely do my setting spray before doing mascara and often before doing my eyeshadow because I find that if I spray after I do my eyeshadow, it, I don't know, it's almost like the color disappears a little bit. So I don't know what that deal is, but I like doing all of the, the setting stuff prior. Let's do some lips. I have a couple of new products here to play with. Seriously, Satin from e.l.f. This is in the shade Cream and it is like a satiny matte. I love the tone. I love the color so much. This is like my favorite color of lip product ever. But as you can see, it definitely is a little bit, hmm, what's the word? It can separate or like you can see that it like gets a tiny little baby bit streaky and it is pretty light. So I do like to add in a little more color. This is so comfortable. This is the lipstick queen in the shade Truth or Bare. Or is that the line it's from? No, I think that's the name of the shade. 
Um, these are so incredibly creamy. It's a little darker than I want all over the lip. So I use it as like a topper. Like see how it just kind of like deepened up what the e.l.f. one did and it gave it a little more of a, a comfortable sheen. I love that so much. It can be worn on its own and it's really comfortable. As you can see, I have like used up quite a bit of those because um, this was definitely sticking out over the top when I first got it. So I have been uh, using those quite a bit. And then if I feel like I need another little gloss, I got this little crushed oil infused gloss in my Sephora order. It's a Bobbi Brown one. I will probably never buy the full size because it's probably astronomically expensive. And I'll put just a little bit of gloss. It's just the one I have handy, but any gloss in the center just to give it extra little juiciness and plumpness to uh, the lip look. See, not everything is totally covered over here and I am okay with that. For the most part, everything is nice and evened out. I feel very glowy, I feel very vibrant, I feel very me still. I, I feel like it's just not, it's not too much. You got a little something on to make you feel pulled together, feel glowy and hydrated and comfortable. Everything is comfortable. That really should be the, like, the title, like comfortable makeup. Um, this is, this is it. I love it so much. But yeah, this is kind of what I've been doing when getting ready for work, modifying here or there based on time or what I'm feeling like for that day. Sometimes I, for the most part, I like switch up the how much application of the bronzer or maybe I'll add in like a little more contouring with the Natasha Denona contouring sculpt powder. I use that. That's top shelf here. So there's a couple of things that I play with color wise throughout the week, but for the most part, the skin products are, that's what I've been using. Unless I want more full coverage, then I kind of pull in my Revlon or my L'Oreal, or I've even gotten a new um, Juvia's Place one. That is full coverage, holy moly. <laughs> okay, so this is pretty much the finished look here. I hope you learned something new or heard about a product that you are excited to go out and try. I will leave a list of all of the products in the description box down below. And yeah, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in a video very soon, bye.